now here's the drawings that I put together for the reflector panel. First of all, I resourced um, the fella here, designed by Richard Comp and artwork by Jim Coder. It shows degrees that your solar reflector is supposed to be facing the sun. Um, so with mine, he works, he works off of a 30 degree front already. I don't. So I have to adjust mine by that 30 degrees because mine is uh, perpendicular or parallel to the pavement uh, surface. So I just started out with little notes and then uh, kind of drew up a schematic of what the original, uh, what the main reflector panel would look like with the two side flanges. Put some measurements on there. Uh, tried to imagine what the overhead looked like. Played with some uh, hinge ideas. Some of them uh, were working, some weren't. From there, I went to a little bit more detail on how exactly um, the items are supposed to go together and came up with the idea there's going to be two positions uh, basically for this water box. There's going to be a position in the winter where the reflector panel is going to be standing straight up in the back, the rear reflector, and then there's going to be a summer position where the reflector is actually going to be back. Why? Because in the summer, the sun is higher in the sky up here, where in the winter, it's more down here. So you're, it's coming, coming in this way. That's why the panel can be more up. And then right now, I'm working with the idea of how to hook that um, summer reflector to the box without it flapping around in the wind during the day. Because also, it has to be dismantled at night to bring it down. Because this not only is going to be... This is not only going to be a reflector coming in for sun, it's going to be taken down at night and serve for insulation to keep the heat in. So those are some of my notes. That's how I do it. Uh, when you do it, you'll probably be a bit more organized than I am and probably come up with some great ideas. I hope some of you follow through on this project and do something to um, benefit the environment, benefit your, your gas, your energy bill and also learn a lot and have a lot of fun with your project. I think in one of my videos was talking about repurposing different things where if something isn't used for one thing it may be able to be used for another which is a really good way of recycling which is a, a theme I like to stick with and using what you have instead of going out and buying new necessarily when you don't really need it. Well, I had this Martha Stewart um, garden hose reel here that was for outside and I used it for a couple years but it started to crack here and there and the base was kind of was coming apart. It wasn't as secure as it was for the heavy load of a garden hose. So what I did was I took an extension cord that's a lot lighter weight and I wrapped it around there instead of the garden hose and now I use that. Uh, to keep my extension cord nice and neat instead of looking like a pile of spaghetti noodles. And I just unwheel it like this. And it goes where I want it to go. And then the other end, the end with the plug, I just tuck into one of the little holes here. See, a little plug just fits in one of those holes, and then you just pull it out when you're ready to use it. Like that. And it goes right into the outlet over here. And you can just plug it back in whenever you're done. The fun part about this setup is that when you're done with your electric cord, you don't have to wheel it on a little hand thing or do that special loop in loop thing that I've seen some contractors do. You just wheel it up. And it's ready to go again except for putting your plug in the hole. How easy is that? You know how the cords on your electrical equipment, you always have this little bread tie thing and there's a lot of like twisting, untwisting, and this kind of stuff. Well, I found these at the hardware store. This was like, a, I don't know, a few years ago. But they're the coolest thing. They're called cable cuffs. And they are just like easy on, easy off. To open, you just pull back that little knob, and it pulls right out. 
and then to close you just snap it and your cord is encased so there's to open put, put your cord in it you're done no twisting no turning and it's so much faster and it holds it just as secure it's a great little thing and then so I don't lose it I just clip it right on the cord whatever I'm using so it's always with the tool that it's supposed to help this is just a cool little tip I thought you'd like okay here's that uh, piece of tin or piece of galvanized steel that uh, sheeting that uh, if you remember the last time we uh, marked it so I could cut it from corner to corner this is going to be our triangular side panels for the reflector screen so today we got a cut I've got it clamped down there to the sawhorses and clamped down there and of course we're going to be using a little oil on the cut so that the blade uh, doesn't get ruined as fast that's what we're doing right now okay. I got the pieces uh, the side panels laid out and how I'm, I'm going to get them on there they're going to be hinged uh, with uh, pieces of the piano hinge onto the edges of the main reflector panel here and over there. But for now, I want to get a few more rivets in here and I got to finish off putting the edging that we started to cut last night on either side of that, uh, one step at a time. Okay, I cut off the end over here so it would fit the side of this. And right now I'm just getting the edges to up with the other trim and getting it snugged on. And I get my pony clips, clamp it on good, drill my rivet holes and rivet. Oh no, riveting. starting to sweat had to take my shirt off and you know I'm looking around it looks really like a nice day and I realize I'm getting the reflection off this panel it's baking me that's a good sign uh, in the last uh, episode the last part of the series here I was talking about the different size washers that I was combining with my rivets to get a more secure hold on the hinge. It's going to have a lot of pull on it, so I want to make sure it was really secure. Well, these are some of the washers I had available to me besides the open washers and the, the tooth washers. These are just plain cut washers. Anyway, this, this uh, diameter of the hole was way too big. This one here uh, was one I thought I could use. This one is the number six that Home Depot was selling. But this one here is like the mystery washer. It actually, if you look carefully, you can see that the diameter of the hole is actually smaller than the number six. And uh, I, uh, Home Depot didn't have that. So I'm not sure where that washer came from. Maybe from an electrical store but that size of diameter will stay on the rivet head after it gets crimped down. The number six from the Home Depot or wherever else you buy it, though the diameter of the hole is too big and it will not hold on that rivet. So save yourself a lot of aggravation and frustration. If you try to buy a number six, you may have to go with something else so you don't go through the rivet nightmare that I went through. <laughs> Oh, don't want to go through that again. <laughs> 